Sarah, welcome back. It's still Plus Politics. The Kaduna State Government says no fewer than 1,192 persons were killed, while 3,348 people were kidnapped by bandits in the state in 2021. The governor, Nasser Arafai, after receiving the report, asked the federal government to create another theater command uh, similar to the one in the northeast to tackle the insecurity in the northwest in Niger state. The governor also maintained that bandits or terrorists do not deserve mercy and therefore must be killed. He said the military and the police are needed to be provided with modern equipment by the federal government. Uh, joining us this time around is a public affairs analyst, Paul Cato, and security expert, uh, Dixon Osaji. Many thanks, um, gentlemen, for joining us on this particular uh, discourse this time around. All right, let me start with you, uh, Dixon. Well, the governor uh, came out loud and uh, yesterday when he made um, his position known concerning what is happening in his state, uh, he uh, is lamenting that uh, no legitimate government can survive by tolerating terrorists or negotiating with uh, those uh, who you know, constitute menace uh, to law-abiding um, citizens. He is actually against uh, what he called repentant bandit. Dixon, you are a security analyst. You have been in the military. You understand the terrain. Now, let's talk about uh, repentant bandits. Do you really think uh, it will help the country when it comes to sorting out uh, itself from this issue that has plagued us over time? Justin, thank you very much. Yeah. It's quite, it's quite regrettable uh, what is happening in our dear country, uh, Nigeria. And uh, I think uh, it's a failure on uh, leadership. It's also a failure on uh, political strategy, security, uh, economic strategy, and uh, operational strategy. Uh, the, the governor of Kaduna State, uh, they just released the, uh, uh, what's it called, the uh, report on the death of uh, Nigerians in Kaduna State, and the report is not friendly. No, it's it's not, not good it's enough for us to, you know, accommodate. Uh, because having 1,192 uh, Nigerians being killed and about 3,348 being killed in our own country, in our own state, uh, just saying with all honesty, it is highly, highly unacceptable. Uh, well, for me, I think uh, we need to start looking at uh, developing a holistic strategy. Because from terrorism studies, if over 999 uh, persons are killed in action or died in the hands of criminals or terrorist elements, it is a worse situation. So for me, I think uh, the Kaduna State government should declare a full-blown war against these terrorists. Let me shock you, Justin. Kaduna State harbors the highest institution of the, of, of the, of the Nigerian state. We have the Nigerian Defense Academy in Kaduna State. We have the, uh, uh, the Nigerian Army Training Institution, that is the Depot Nigerian Army Training Institution in, in Zaria, Kaduna State. So we cannot have a state that harbors a lot of training institutions and we are unable to curtail uh, with the spirit of insecurity there in uh, Kaduna State. Uh, I sympathize with those who died uh, in the hands of this unnecessary human being and their families. It's really a, a worrisome situation, Justin, trust me. Uh, but for me, in the next question, I think we'll be looking at the uh, mitigation factors or what the country uh, needs to do uh, to mitigate this menace. All right. Uh, before we talk about uh, mitigation, I'll just ask that uh, you hold that thought. Uh, let's uh, bring in a, uh, a resident uh, in Kaduna State who is also a public affairs analyst. That's um, Paul Kato. Paul, thank you for joining us this time around. Good evening to you. All right, uh, I'll still try and reconnect with Paul. I can barely uh, make out uh, what he said. I'll go back to you now, Dixon Osaji. Uh, the governor specifically <laughs> talked about... Uh, Dixon, can you, are you still on the line? Yes, I'm here, Justin. All right, fine. The governor talked about creation of um, a theater, a uh, theater command that will enable a holistic approach. I'm just quoting him, you know, verbatim. He said, the creation of such a theater command will enable a holistic approach to counter insurgents across uh, the six affected states and enhanced coordination of the resources of the armed forces, the police, 
the SSS. He went on to state, our respective state vigil our vigilant services, hunters and other local volunteers to fight the insurgents are, are needed. Looking at all that he has said, uh, what do you really make about uh, this uh, creation of a theater of command uh, uh, security-wise? Uh, do you really think it will go far in uh, stemming this issue in the bud? Uh, not at all, uh, Justin. It should not uh, uh, mitigate uh, that the series of insecurity in uh, the Kaduna State and other states uh, close. Kaduna State is the second least secure state in Nigeria, Justin. And I must tell you for free, uh, the uh, the governor's uh, approach is not going to mitigate security uh, because when we talk about counter insurgency. We are looking at the issue of insecurity, specifically uh, the report that was just released by the Kaduna State Governor indicating uh, the alarming number of people that uh, either was killed or were killed in 2021. We have um, Paul Cato this time around. Uh, he is a public affairs analyst. Uh, thanks for joining us, uh, Paul. Thank you very much for having me on your program and good evening. All right, uh, let me just start by asking first, what's the mood in Kaduna State right now as we speak? Well, generally the mood in Kaduna State right now as we speak, uh, people are not happy with the current situation on ground. Uh, every day we wake up uh, with the fear of not coming back home. It's either you're kidnapped on the road, on the farm, or even while in your own house. So I must say with all sincerity, um, Kaduna is not a safe state at all. I, I tell those who care to listen to me that uh, uh, Meduguri, which is the capital of Borno, is safer than the whole Kaduna put together. Well, that's really alarming. Uh, the governor released the report yesterday, and he said uh, 1,192 persons were killed by bandits. Uh, he also went on to say that 3,348 you know, were kidnapped, 891 injured in 2021. That's according to a report. It could actually be more. You know, over time, he's talked about a holistic approach. Uh, how would you really rate, uh, you know, security operatives in Kaduna State? Uh, right now, the governor is calling for better approach. He wants uh, a coordinated uh, attempt uh, with uh, local vigilantes and hunters. You know, so far, how have they done in the state? Well, the, 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 the report has, has, uh, has, indicted them, has indicted the government itself because if they have done so well, we wouldn't be having these numbers of people, almost over 1,000 people killed and almost over 3,000 people kidnapped. The fact here is um, I think the approach the government is taking, it's not, um, from my point of view, it's not holistic because sincerely speaking, Kaduna already is a, it, 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 it's, it's a world theater. Uh, just as uh, your uh, your guest said, um, uh, Dixon himself, Kaduna yes. is the home of almost all the military institutions you can think of in Nigeria. And it's something's fundamentally wrong that you have the Defense Academy, you have the Air Force, you have uh, uh, the School of Artillery, both in Kachiadas for the Navy and the Army. Then you have the first div and the third div, and Kaduna is still, you know, being harassed every day by ragtag bandits. Something is fundamentally wrong somewhere. You know, and I, 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 do, I do not know really what is happening, but I think something is wrong and um, the government is not actually telling the citizens of Kaduna what's actually wrong because with all they've spent in terms of um, security fundings and all that, intelligence gathering, I think we are supposed to have passed this stage already where you have people being killed as if they are animals. This is not just, I'm tired of people saying, uh, I'm tired of the statistics, you know, 1,192 and uh, more, because this is their own statistics, because we have other statistics also on ground to prove to you that All right, Paul. over 2000... All yeah. right, Paul, so would you really say that uh, the state government is actually overwhelmed uh, when it comes to securing the lives and property you know, of people you know, residing in the state? Uh, do you think uh, right now there is an urgent need for maybe national intervention? I wouldn't say the state is overwhelmed, I would say the state is not doing the 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 the, the needful, you know. Um, with, with all that you have on ground in terms of military military institutions, what's, they're, they're, what what is actually stopping the state from implementing, you know, uh, basic basic security uh, 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 measures to to cover where, what we're facing right now in Kaduna? I tell you for something. I, I tell you, I'll, I'll say this. 
Kaduna has a very high number of retired military and policemen. What stops the government from calling up retired military men, you know, cut, cut, cut across the three, uh, cut across the 23 local governments in uh, Kaduna State and the 255 wards in Kaduna State? You know, uh, these are retired uh, uh, people who have, who have served the nation before. And I don't think uh, if, if the government calls them up to service again, I don't think they will, they will say no. What is there is if for, for government for government to actually call this issue, it, it, it has to it has to uh, uh, look at it from from a, from from a bottom top approach, not the top bottom approach, because as they say, politics is local, so also violence is local. So you have to carry along people from the rural communities that are being attacked every day. They, the, the state government, had, the state government, there, some few years back, two years ago, a year ago, said they spend money on buying dro uh, drones. We've not seen the effect of the drones, really. If at all they bought drones, whatever attacks are about to happen, or whatever people are about to be kidnapped, it's expected that these drones will be roving around Kaduna City and its environs. So I, 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 just, I just feel and I believe that the government approach towards the Kaduna State government approach toward curbing this issue or stopping this violence is not just working. They need to rethink their approach, get retired military men, policemen, DSS men from Kaduna State. Uh, spread across the country local government who can come in and give in their advice and work hand in hand with those who are still in service. I tell you, give them six months to get the results. Less than six months to get the results. All right, and thank you, Paula. Uh, let's um, talk to uh, Dixon uh, once again. Uh, Dixon, are you still there? I am alive, yeah. <laughs> of course you are. You know, I just want to get your quick and candid opinion concerning uh, the governor's position on bandits or, or terrorists, as it were. He wants them to be killed. Is that the way forward? Well, it, it's not the way forward, but uh, that is necessary evil. Uh, because uh, I just listened, listened to uh, the last speaker. He made a fantastic point. Mm. But let me disabuse his mind. Uh, it, not any retired soldier or retired police or ex-service person, personnel will be happy to go back to serve his nation or to defend his nation. Why mm. they were in service? What did the government do to them? Do for them. Uh, after mm. leaving the service, you can, I can tell you that they are still being held uh, 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 their basic allowance, that their department allowance. You could see the retired armed forces of Nigeria some few weeks ago uh, did protest against the government that uh, Give us our dues. Why are you not giving us our dues? So are you telling me someone that is not being paid his dues will be happy to be called back? Personally, myself, I will not be, I will not be happy to be called back. Uh, I better uh, leave the country than to be called back. Uh, because uh, a country that is well, uh, that, that, that should, that, uh, that cut up for his uh, retired veterans, that take good care of his veterans, definitely those veterans will be so happy and delighted to be called back. So what are you doing to the veterans? What, what is the benefit for the, for the veterans? You think you can just call them back in time of danger? No way. Now, going back to your question, uh, uh, Justin, uh, the approach from the Cardinal State Government, from the Cardinal State Government, is what we classify as operational strategy. There are various strategies you can adopt in containing with uh, the spirit of insecurity. The last speaker rightly talked about people being killed in the rural areas. Mm. Now, we have the political strategy. We need to start looking at the political strategy. Counterinsurgency, Justin, is not a military might. Military yeah. might will never eliminate terrorism. Counterinsurgency is, in a, is a two way coin enemy centric and population centric. Enemy centric in the sense that it has to do with the military, the police, and the security agents. Population centric has to do with the civilian populace. That is where the political strategy comes to play. That is where the administrative strategy comes to play. That is where the economic strategy comes to play. We have a lot of people that are not well taken care of by the government. If an offer comes from the terrorists or from the a bandit, a lot of Nigerians will fly at the offer. And that is why we need to start looking at resolving all the grievances between political parties. Political strategy is very, very important at this stage. We don't think that they give the military order, let them go and kill. No. Killing of terrorists will never eliminate terrorism. You don't measure success by killing of terrorists. You measure success by the state of peace. How do you arrive at the state of peace? For you to arrive at the state of peace, you need to bring in all the components together, counter-insurgency right. components. Right. 
All right, thank, okay, you. I'm here. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Dixon. Uh, we are actually out of time. We must say a very big thank you to you know for all of your contribution, and of course, uh, uh, Paul Cartels. Uh, thank you so much, gentlemen. You know for all that you have said today. We just pray that um, you know, these killings and these kidnappings in Kaduna State and indeed other parts of the country, you know, would be actually brought to zero point because we can't continue like that as a country. Thank you once again, gentlemen. All right, uh, well, that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin at Plus Politics returns tomorrow. Bye for now.